I'm going to start off this video with a disclaimer. Some followers of the Mormon Mom Talk influencers might tell me that I'm judgmental and that I'm not being kind. Apparently, I have no right to defend my church, its members, and its beliefs. However, because these creators have a public account with apparently 9 million viewers, according to the Hulu trailer, and because they are participating in a reality show discussing their personal lives, Anyone has a right to respond and make judgments. If you don't want judgment, then don't shout your sins from the rooftops. Don't cast your fake pearls before the swine. Oof, those last comments were harsh. My apologies. On September 6th, 2024, Hulu Originals is going to release a reality show called The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. A commenter noted that it will spark conversations of modern Mormon life like never before. Before I start my unkind judgments, I would like to point out something about using the name Mormon. That these women call themselves Mormon tells you something. Members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who keep their covenants and abide by the LDS Church's teachings and standards do not publicly refer to themselves as Mormons. I will use the term LDS Church and LDS Members because I will be referring to the Church and its members often. One thing I have noticed is that when President Russell M. Nelson, our current prophet, asked us to refer to ourselves as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or as Latter-day Saints, or even as an LDS member, it created a division. People who are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and who refer to themselves as that are generally active, covenant-keeping members of the LDS Church. They adhere to the standards and the teachings of the LDS Church. Some people who still refer to themselves as Mormons publicly in the news and entertainment industry or in social media outlets are generally either not keeping their covenants that they made with the Lord and are not adhering to the standards or teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or they have left the church altogether. And the news and entertainment outlets who refer to the LDS Church as the Mormon Church or who refer to its members as Mormons are generally not friendly toward the Latter-day Saint Church or its members. Is the content anti-LDS or against what the LDS Church teaches? Just look at what the creators call themselves. I don't believe that this is a generalization either. I have heard other LDS members make the same observation. I am now going to address some of the sound bites from the Hulu trailer marketing the reality show and some of the statements made on some of the Mormon Mom Talk social media posts. Quote, a sound bite is a short, catchy piece of video, audio, or speech chosen to give the essence of what you are saying and arouse interest in the full-length source. It's widely used in journalism, politics, and marketing to define headlines. End quote. Basically, a soundbite tries to get your attention. In this case, Hulu is marketing the reality show as being scintillating and scandalous. Honestly, if Hulu were to create an accurate show about the real lives of Latter-day Saint women, it would be boring. They would have no viewers. Well, they may have LDS viewers. But Hulu wants to make money, and the show's producers want celebrity and notoriety. So do the Mom Talk creators. After all, two of the trailer's sound bites is one of the creators exclaiming, quote, we are breaking the norm, end quote, and quote, who is currently the breadwinner at home? All of us, end quote. Before I start with the sound bites, I would like to address the first scene of the show's trailer. The members of the Mormon Mom Talk group are standing in front of the old Provo Temple, all wearing the same blue overcoat and holding hands. If you're familiar with American societal culture, the phrase handmaid's tale may have come to your mind upon seeing this image like it did mine. My guess is that the producers of the show are trying to convey that the creators of Mormon Mom Talk live in a subculture that is comparable to that in the story of the handmaid's tale. 
I read the book The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood years ago while I was attending university. It's a compelling story written by a very talented writer. However, the subculture of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is in no way like that portrayed in the book The Handmaid's Tale. It is a ridiculous assertion. Sound by, quote, I love the Mormon Church, but there are a lot of rules to follow, end quote. First, let's change the synonym from rule to either commandments, standards, principles, or precepts. After all, those are the synonyms that the Lord uses. He doesn't ask his followers to follow his rules. He asks his followers to obey his commandments. The number of so-called rules to follow in the LDS Church perhaps depends upon the covenants you have made with the Lord. If you have only made baptismal covenants, then you are expected to live what is probably considered basic Christian religious rules. If you choose to make temple covenants, then yes, there is more that the Lord asks of you, which is fair. But each individual chooses how many commandments, standards, principles, and precepts they wish to follow. The gospel of Jesus Christ is centered on agency. Soundbite, quote, in the Mormon religion, we're very conservative, end quote. Who is very conservative? You? Good for you. However, not every active American Latter-day Saint is a Republican and considered conservative, and not every LDS member the world over is considered conservative in their country. That is a generalization. There is a very wide spectrum that conservative and liberal viewpoints sit on. Conservatism and liberalism are not black and white belief systems. People tend to frame beliefs in a black and white worldview, but in reality it doesn't exist. And what is conservative to one person is not necessarily conservative to another person. That goes for liberalism too. In Utah, I might be considered liberal. Outside of Utah, definitely conservative. It's all relative. Soundbite. Quote, we were raised to be housewives to these men serving their every desires. End quote. Just because the mom talk women were raised to be housewives serving a man's every desire, it does not mean that every Latter-day Saint woman was raised that way. If someone were to tell my husband that I serve his every desire, he would laugh at them. Let me think. What is an example of me fulfilling one of my husband's desires? Oh, wait, I have one. I fulfill his desire to golf because I allow it. Does that count? And believe me, ladies, I know women who don't allow their husbands to golf. If I knew that my sons expected their wives to meet their every desire, I would literally kick their butts and side with their wives. Not that their wives would put up with it anyway. LDS women are not taught that they are to meet their husband's every desire. It's a laughable claim. Personally, I was raised to further my education after high school. My mother was a registered nurse. She met my father, who was in his medical school residency, at the hospital they both worked at. They married after my mother had graduated from university and had begun her nursing career. By the way, to give perspective, they were married in 1953. Oh, and my mother was not considered unattractive and therefore unmarriageable. She was a very beautiful, classy, intelligent 25-year-old woman when she married my father. And she was raised in a pioneer stock LDS home. I have four sisters. All of my sisters attended college and or university and graduated with degrees. Personally, I attended a junior college where I received an associate's degree, and I attended university, where I received a bachelor of science degree. I married about one year before I graduated with my university degree. To give perspective, I graduated from high school in 1983, and I was raised in Salt Lake City, Utah. My children are around the ages of the Mormon Mom Talk influencers. We have taught them to further their education after high school. My older daughter graduated from university with a major and two minor degrees. She was in the process of applying to law school when she was offered a killer job at a biotech company. All of this happened while she was married. My second daughter is attending university as a junior this year in a landscape design program. 
One of my daughter-in-laws is in a user experience design program at university. My other daughter-in-law attended college and has two different degrees. The story is similar with my sister-in-laws, my nieces, and my LDS friends and associates and their daughters. Soundbite, quote, have your kids by the time you're 21, or in my case, 16, end quote. As my mother would say, oh, for Pete's sake. My mother was 27 when she had her first child. My sisters were 27, 35, 29, and 26 when they had their first child. I was 28. My older daughter is 28. She does not yet have a child. One daughter-in-law is 28. She does not yet have a child. My other daughter-in-law had her first child at age 25. My family situation is not an anomaly in the LDS church either. I know many LDS women who have similar stories. And having a baby at age 16? Hulu is trying to make it sound like this creator was told by the LDS church to have a baby at age 16. That is laughable. My guess is that she became pregnant out of wedlock at age 16 and was told, or chose herself, to keep her baby as opposed to putting the baby up for adoption. There is no shame in choosing to keep her baby. Again, it all goes back to agency. The gospel of Jesus Christ is about agency. Maybe this creator did marry at age 16 and then had a baby, but that is an anomaly. It is not a typical scenario for an LDS young woman. To say otherwise is disingenuous. Soundbite. Quote, and I'm like, F this, end quote. F what? Is someone telling you what to do? Who's telling you what to do? Why are you giving your personal authority over to someone else? That is your personal problem. That is not the LDS church's problem. Stop blaming your life choices on someone else and take control of your own life. And you could say, dear viewer, that's not what she is saying. Perhaps, but that is what Hulu is implying. In one TikTok post, someone asked this creator if she wears garments, and she replied that she has not been endowed or sealed in the temple, and that what is most important to her is to be kind to others. Again, what is she complaining about then? Remember when I talked about covenants and that if you make covenants in the temple, the Lord asks more of you? Among other things, she will not be expected to live the law of chastity, attend her church meetings, pay her tithing, or keep the word of wisdom in order to attend the temple. Please, someone help me understand what she is complaining about. She could join any other Christian church at this point and have the same supposed restrictions. Soundbite. Quote, we are breaking the norm. We are trying to change the stigma of gender roles in the Mormon culture, end quote. Okay, tell that to the many LDS women who are attorneys, medical doctors, nurses, business executives, business owners, university professors, school teachers, therapists, ad nauseum. I hate to tell you ladies this, but they have already changed the stigma of gender roles in the LDS church. You are too late to the party. Soundbite, quote, I need you to twerk your ass off, end quote. Please, ladies, break the cultural norms of the LDS church so that all of us repressed LDS women can twerk our asses off. I've been waiting my entire life to do that. And I bet LDS women in other countries throughout the world would agree with me on that. Cue the sarcasm. Newsflash, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is not just a Utah or American church anymore. It's a worldwide church with millions and millions of members located in multiple countries. Not everyone wishes to embrace hedonistic Western culture. Sound bites. Quote, And then it just turned into this, everyone is swinging with each other, end quote. Quote, no one is innocent. Everyone has hooked up with everyone, end quote. And then Mom Talk's definition of soft swinging, quote, it was like swapping with each other, standing next to each other, end quote. I will not display any photos or videos in this section. How would I even portray the subject without being flagged by YouTube? 
it would definitely be considered 18 plus content. Trust me, it's very disconcerting when one of your videos is flagged as 18 plus content. Anyway, I don't think that this is one of the women's secrets as it is addressed on the Mormon Mom Talk account. The second soundbite in this example is from a TikTok post. In one Mom Talk post, the creator points to words above the group that reads, quote, when he is your friend's husband, end quote. Then all the women in the group start to twerk. Is that when it turns into everyone swinging with each other? Just because a couple engages in gross activities or an individual breaks a commandment, it doesn't mean that every member of that church engages in the same behavior or that the church they belong to is not legitimate. It all goes back to agency. Are you going to choose to follow Jesus Christ and obey his commandments like he has asked his followers to do? It is your choice. But remember, there are consequences. God is merciful, but he also requires justice. And honestly, I can't think of anything more disgusting and demeaning than kissing and doing who knows what else with another man while your husband is standing next to you. What the hell? Actually, I would feel like I was in hell. And are we surprised that soft swinging turned into full swinging and then to adultery? It's a predictable progression. Soundbite, quote, Now there is a fight for mom talk. The drama is now with the husbands. It feels like they are stuck in another era, and it's starting to tear the group apart, end quote. You mean the husbands are stuck in an idea that a healthy couple is a cohesive entity based on love and trust? Last I checked, that is not unique to Latter-day Saints. That is a basic tenant of a healthy relationship. Someone that you're supposedly building a life with and that you have children with comes second to a group of women? What if the tables were turned and you came second to his group of guy friends? Either way, it's a marriage killer, regardless of religion. Sound bite, quote, there are so many secrets, lies, and gossip, end quote. Sounds like a group of women that I would love to be a part of. Cue the sarcasm. But really, even when I was in my 20s, no thank you. Life is too short for such needless nonsense. Perhaps I am being a bit judgmental and unkind in my responses, but honestly, I am very tired of others trying to define who I am based on my religion, trying to tell the world who my family, friends, neighbors, and associates are based on their religion. Stop telling the world that we are what we are not. Go make your fame and fortune some other way. Leave the rest of us out of it. Although, I suppose that my response is coming from the viewpoint of a mother. If my children were to publicly make similar ridiculous statements and engage in similar behavior exhibited in this trailer and in the Mormon Mom Talk posts, honestly, I don't even know how I would react. Probably make a video like this.